The next type of malware category is a backdoor, and it's a type of Trojan, and it's also a type of virus. As I mentioned, some of these are crossovers. Backdoor really is mostly about what is the payload, what is the actual software going to run, and it's designed so that it doesn't attack a system, it doesn't destroy data, it doesn't consume network bandwidth. It allows you to re-enter a system. So it essentially opens up, if you will, a network port or a command prompt or a remote session so that you can get back into the system that you've targeted at any point with little or no authentication. Once you've hacked and cracked your way all the way through a network, you've figured out how to how to compromise passwords, you've logged into a user system remotely, or you've compromised a laptop maybe uh, in some way and gotten that on the target network, there's got to be an easy way for you to get in. You don't want to have to re-hack and re-get through everything, all the controls, every single time. That's what a backdoor is all about, is facilitating that re-entry with little or no work. And packaging up and attacking with a backdoor is virtually the same as a Trojan. It's just instead of selecting things like data destruction or data compromise payloads, you're selecting a remote control or backdoor type of payload. That's all it is. And the type of payload, the type of backdoor you install really depends entirely on how you want to administer the network or how you want to control things on the back end. You may use a backdoor that runs remote screen grab or screen control like VNC or terminal services. You may install a backdoor that captures input on a certain port and pipes it to command.exe like netcat. There is no right or wrong here. It really just depends on what you want to do and also what you think the target network administration will not detect. So if the target network is often administered by VNC connections, let's say, well, that's great. Maybe you want to install a backdoor that actually installs VNC, but installs it in a way that you can get to it with a specific port that you design or a password that you specify so that you can get to that server with VNC. And even if the network administration finds that VNC installed as a backdoor, they may just think, oh, well, it's actually just VNC. Looks like somebody installed it wrong or installed it in a bad place or use the wrong port number, that kind of thing. So probably won't set off the alarm bells. 